So imagine you have a inductor, capacitor and resistor all connected in series to an AC source. Resistor has resistance, capacitor has capacitance, inductor has inductance. Now in series, you know current will be same. So let us say this is the phasor representing the current. Now in resistor, whatever voltage is there, the peak voltage let us write V naught R. So in resistor current and voltage were same phase or not in same phase? Same phase. <clears throat> so for resistor, the voltage will be in the same phase, method, the angle will be same. So the phasor of voltage for resistor, the phasor of voltage across resistor will be in the same direction as this current. What about in capacitor? Current leads or voltage leads in capacitor? Current leads. Current leads, so voltage lags. Okay. So in capacitor, voltage lags by 90 degree. Lags with the it will be behind. <clears throat> and oh, therefore, in inductor, we know current lags, so voltage leads. So this was your phasor diagram. Understood? No. Now we want to find the total applied peak voltage. So applied peak voltage is V0, let's say. Okay, so here is the total peak voltage. Now some of you may think this is equal to this. Usually we write applied total voltage is V1 plus V2 plus V3. But this is not applicable in AC circuit. Why it is not applicable this formula? Because these voltages have phase. So when one is going through positive cycle, other may not be going through positive cycle. So you cannot directly add them. That's why phasor technique is very useful. Now look at this carefully. This voltage and this voltage are in opposite phase. So if you have here five and here two, what is the resultant of these two? Three. Three. Three, sir. So this voltage is bigger than this voltage. So total of these two will be V0 L minus V0 C, which will be in this direction. So this is V0 L minus V0 C. Then we have to add this voltage also, right? We have to add this voltage, this voltage, this voltage. But we cannot add algebraically because they are phases. We have to add them using vectors concept, vectors concept. So this voltage and this voltage, how to add? When draw a parallelogram, then you draw the diagonal. That diagonal will be your resultant voltage. And the resultant voltage is nothing but the applied voltage, peak value. Now, how to find this diagonal? Well, diagonal will be not equal to root over this square plus this square. Yes or no? Pythagoras theorem. This square plus this square will be V naught square. So V0 will be root over V0 L minus V0 C square, this square plus this square. So please remember in AC, in AC, the applied voltage peak value is found by using this formula. V0 L is more than, no, no, I just assume V0 L is more than V0 C. Whether V0 L is more or less depends on what? What is the formula for V0 R? I, I0 into R. Check your notes. Ohm's law. Yes or no, Nikhil? This part is clear? <clears throat> ah. Now tell me similar formula for capacitor. How did we write? I0 into what we wrote? What I told? Who plays the role of resistance in capacitor? Capacitive reactors. How do we write? Xc. Then how we wrote V0 L. I0 into Xl. Can you tell me why everywhere I0, I0, I0 only? Current is same. Current is same in series. 
but voltages will be different and that is because each of them offer different opposition for resistor the opposition to current is called resistance for capacitor capacitive reactance for inductor inductive reactance now whether this is more or this is more will depend on what nickel values of xc and xl right and that we don't know right now whether xc is more or xl is more so i'm just assuming v not l is more right now they may be equal also so we will study it today we have to study that only what happens if v not l is equal to v not c okay chalo now let us uh, try to find current so for current what we will do we will substitute for all this v not r v not c v not l here so since i have done it already i will just substitute here what is v not l i not into x l what is v not c i not into x c v not r i not into r so we square it i not square r square so from here if you look carefully here i not i not is common so if you square it it will become i not square into xl minus xc whole square plus i not square r square is everything everything clear till here darshan so i have just taken i not common okay na then here you can see i not square i not square common so i can take it further common and then square root of i not square will give me what i not i i not and then what is left root over xl minus xl minus xc whole square yes, sir now students notice something when there was only resistor how did we write voltage i not into r only capacitor voltage how did we write i not into xc only inductor i not into xc when all of them are in series how we are writing v not i not into this so now this is playing the role of resistance yes or no so this formula can be now written as i not is equals to v not divided by this whole thing and this is playing the role of net opposition to the flow of ac and that net opposition is called what name impedance okay so we write this formula as i not equals to v not by z and z is called your impedance so what is the formula for z xl minus xc whole square plus r square. plus r also remember they may sometimes ask you what about the phase difference when there was only resistor current and voltage were in same phase but now you can see the total voltage makes some angle with current so that angle is what is called phase difference what difference phase difference between current and voltage if they say voltage it means total voltage only right so how to find this phase difference what formula we used tan phi opposite side is what tell me quickly so the opposite side is v not l minus v not c divided by what is the adjacent side v not r v not r v not r okay by the way same formula can be written in terms of rms values also why sir you just what is the relation v rms is v not by root 2 so you can you know divide by root 2 here then divide by root 2 then you can also write tan phi as vl minus vc by vr when i write like this vl it means rms voltage across inductor v not l by root okay so this part we will see in later for entrance purpose we will see now if you substitute for the voltages in terms of current what was v not l i not into xl minus i not into xc divided by v not r was i not into r if you take i not common it will cancel 
So tan phi comes out xl minus xc divided by r. So these are the two important derivations. One is for phase difference, one is for impedance. Okay, in that diagram, I rubbed it V naught R, this was V naught L minus V naught C, and this was your resultant voltage. In this diagram, suppose I ask cos phi, tell me. V naught R by. Kiran Kanti, you tell. V naught R by square root of. No, no, tell me simple, simple, simple. V naught, sir. So cos phi is what? Adjacent by hypotenuse. This is your adjacent side, no, Baba? Hypotenuse. Okay. I hope it is clear, right? Diagram. Who is who? So this is adjacent. This is opposite because I can do it here also. And this is hypotenuse. So cos phi is this. And in terms of current, if I write V naught R was I naught into R. What is V naught? I naught into Z. I naught into Z. Because this is the total voltage, total peak voltage. So for total voltage, you have to use total impedance, total opposition, which is called impedance. For voltage across resistor, you use only resistance of resistor. I not care. So cos phi formula is R by Z. This is very, very important, guys. This ratio is also called power factor. Okay, why it is called power factor is last class, the last topic we did was what? Average power, yes. Average sir? power consumed by LCR series circuit. So if you calculate power is current into voltage, we all know this formula. I square R. For DC, we write I square R, but actual formula for power is current into voltage. Then if you substitute for current I naught sine omega t for voltage V naught sine uh, I naught omega t plus phi or omega t minus phi. Check. Omega t plus phi. Plus phi. Omega t plus phi. Then you use here formula sin A cos B plus cos A sin B. First of all, your I naught V naught will come outside sin omega t and here you use the formula sin a plus b sin a cos b plus cos a sin b any problem till now no sir now this term into this term you multiply you will get i naught v naught cos phi into sin square omega t plus here here you multiply i naught v naught sin phi what is left sin omega t cos omega t can be written sin 2 omega t by 2 am i right students yes sir sin omega t cos omega t sin omega t cos omega t can be written sin 2 omega t by 2 now if you take average power average Constant will come outside. I naught B naught cos phi. What was average of sine square? First day I talked. 1 by 2. 1 by 2. So 1 by 2. And average of only sine function is 0. zero. Because this is the one which is changing with time. No. So if you take average of only sine without square, then you will get 0. So this is how we derive the formula for average power. So how much is the formula? What is the formula for average power in AC circuit? I naught. V naught cos phi by 2. This I can also write in terms of RMS value. How? This 2 I can write root 2 into root 2. Any problem? Correct only, right? What is I naught by root 2? IRMS. And V naught by root 2? VRMS. Into cos phi. So this is a beautiful looking formula for average power. So it is almost IV, but it has cos phi also extra. Usually for AC chapter, what I tell you to do, whatever formula we apply for DC chapter, apply for AC, just change the quantity into RMS value. But here you remember cos phi. And this cos phi is also called, what factor I told? Power, power factor. factor. And what it is formula? 
cos phi formula is r by r by z. z. So now what we will do? We will write different formulas of power consumed. Okay, this is very important for your entrance exams and for numericals in board exam. So the first one that we derived is power average is IRMS VRMS cos phi. The second formula you can write is IRMS VRMS R by Z because cos phi is R by Z. Third formula, now listen carefully, uh, don't write. Here you tell me V naught total voltage. Uh, v naught only if I write, it means total peak voltage, applied peak voltage. For resistor, we are writing V naught R, remember. For inductor, V naught L. And for capacitor, V naught C. The naught is there to, re to remind you it's peak voltage. So for total voltage, we wrote I naught into what here? Z. 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 Let me remember. Huh? So if I multiply by root, sorry, divide by root two both sides, which I can always do. So whatever formulas I have for peak voltage, I can also write for RMS voltage. So VRMS is IRMS into Z. Agree or not, guys? Yes, sir. V naught by root two, VRMS, I naught by root two, IRMS. So try to remember that whatever voltage I derive for peak voltage can be written for RMS. Let me keep IRMS same. VRMS I can write from here. IRMS into Z into R by Z. So you notice something. What will cancel? This VRMS I substitute. Z cancel. So you get a very simple looking formula. I square R. Square R, R, I square R. R. Into R. So try to remember this, okay? Now here, if you notice, I substituted for VRMS. What if I substitute for IRMS? Because I can get by IRMS is equals to VRMS by Z. So in place of this IRMS, you can write from here, VRMS by Z whole square into R. So these are the formulas for average power. Please mention it. So now we will do a topic called electrical resonance. So what is this electrical resonance? Let's try to understand. So in a series, LCR, AC circuit, AC matlab, the source is AC voltage. What did we see? Current peak value is V naught by Z. And that is equal to root over R square plus XL minus XC whole square. I think I wrote this one first before. It doesn't matter. So this was the formula we derived just now. Now observe this formula carefully. We see when XL becomes equal to XC. What happens to your denominator? This one, what happens? Zero. 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 That means once this becomes zero, the denominator will have minimum value because R you cannot make zero, remember. Resistance will always be there. Once you have wire, some resistance will be there. So, we see that when XL is equal to XC, the denominator will be minimum. Denominator will be minimum. Thus, I naught will be what? If denominator is minimum for a given voltage, what will be I naught? V naught by R. No, no, no. I am asking, will it be less minimum or maximum? Maximum. maximum. And that max value, if I want to calculate, I will write like this, okay? That will be equal to V naught divided by root over R square plus zero. 
and that will be equal to V naught by R. And this R, if you think carefully, is the minimum value of impedance. Yes or no? The minimum yes, value of impedance, if they ask you, when it will be minimum impedance, when XL will be equal to XC. Now, when will be XL equal to XC? Let us analyze. First, you write this much. So when XL minus XC is zero, which means XL is equal to XC, the denominator means impedance will be minimum. Current in the circuit, the peak current will be maximum. And what is the maximum value of that peak current? V naught by R. Can you guys think in phasor diagram, which I made, what is happening when XL is equal to XC? Can you guys think what is happening in that phasor diagram? Your V naught L and your V naught C are exactly equal. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Because, because this XL is related to V naught L, I naught into XL. And this XC is related to V naught C current into resistance. But for capacitor, we write resistance as XC, capacitive reactance. So when the reactances of capacitor and inductor equal, I naught is already same. What will happen? X V naught L minus V naught C. Those two will cancel. cancel each other. And you, you will have only V naught R. So that's why the circuit is behaving in such a way that there is only resistance for current, peak current, to be maximum, okay, for peak current to be maximum, what should happen students, XL should be equal to XC. Now, everybody try to remember the formula for XL in terms of omega. Check your notes and tell me XL is equal to L omega. L omega. And tell me the formula for XC. 1 by C omega. 1 by C omega. Okay, so these are the two. This is the formula for XL. This is the formula for XC. For that, you have to see the first base notes. Cross multiply, omega square will be 1 by LC. That means omega will be equal to 1 by root over LC. Now go and think where this omega came from actually. So if you remember, when we had this LCR circuit, we connected AC source. And how did we write the voltage of AC source? V equals to V naught sin omega t. Yes or no students? Yes, sir. So this omega is nothing but angular frequency of the AC voltage. Angular frequency, the applied frequency of the AC voltage. And those students, who, um, AC students for whom I have completed AC generator in EMI for thermal, and next class we will finish. So there, if you remember, the coil will rotate in a magnetic field. Remember, and when the coil will rotate in a magnetic field, the flux will change and EMF will be induced. Remember or not? So the how much fast you rotate that decides the frequency. Okay. So omega is equal to one by root over LC. So omega can be written as two pi into. Let me write here. So omega can be written as two pi into frequency, which is equal to one by root over LC. This I think all of you remember, right? Omega is two pi by time period. 1 by time period is frequency. So what is the frequency of the AC source? 1 by 2 by root over LC. Now students, look at the right hand side. The right hand side contains quantities which depends on the circuit or depends on the AC source. Whatever quantities it has depends on the circuit which you have chosen or depends on the AC source which you have chosen. Okay. Circuit, right? Because L and C belongs to the circuit. Yes. yes or no? How much inductor you buy and put, how much capacitor you buy and put, that depends on the circuit here, this part. This is the driving force. This is, the, this is like the source which is trying to drive the current in the circuit. And this has frequency F. So what did you learn from here? 
This is the frequency of AC source. And this is frequency of the circuit, which is called resonant frequency or natural frequency. So from here, what did you learn? When the frequency of AC source equals the resonant frequency of the circuit, then what will happen? XL will be equal to XC. Then what will happen? The oscillations will have what amplitude? Maximum amplitude. Yes or no? The peak current will be maximum. And that phenomenon is called electrical resonance. So this is very natural students in daily life also. You take tea, tea or water in a cup and you walk. Now when you are walking, you are applying periodic force on the cup. Yes or no? You sometimes like this shaking will happen. So as you walk, you are applying some periodic force on the coffee or the tea or the water. Now the, the, the coffee and the tea will have their own natural frequency. So if your frequency will match with the natural frequency, the amplitude will be very high. So the water will come out. So have you experienced like this? Sometimes when you work with coffee, it comes out. Yes. Or you put a plastic bag here and you work. So the plastic bag will oscillate. And it is possible at some, at some frequency of your walking, this amplitude of this will become maximum. Mm. Okay. And there are many other examples. Okay. But this is the meaning of electrical resonance. Okay. So write the mathematics part. Then I will give you the definition of electrical resonance. So here you write the definition. When frequency of the applied AC voltage equals the natural in bracket you write or resonant frequency of LCR circuit, the current oscillates with what amplitude, guys? Maximum amplitude. Super. Maximum amplitude. The peak current will be maximum means what? Peak matlab this. This is your I naught. So that will be maximum I'm saying. So this maximum peak current occurs only at resonance. The current oscillates with maximum amplitude. This is called electrical resonance. Right first. And what is the formula for resonant frequency? F naught, let us write. So for resonant frequency, we will write the symbol F naught, which is equal to 1 by 2 pi root over LC. What if I ask you resonant angular frequency? Resonant angular frequency, omega naught, 1 by root over LC. Remember, relation between omega and frequency is omega is 2 pi a. So, whenever you want omega, just multiply frequency with 2 pi f. So, 2 pi here will cancel. At resonance, the following things happens. What happens? The following things. So, at resonance, the following things happens. First one. Yeah, what do you think first one? Your XL becomes equal to XC. Agree? Yes, sir. And if XL equals to XC also means V voltage across inductor, whether it's peak voltage or RMS doesn't matter, equals voltage across capacity. So try to remember this. At resonance, Voltage across inductor and capacitor equals the RMS value. This is RMS value. And 
Xl is L omega. Xc is 1 by C omega. So if you cross multiply, omega square will be 1 by Lc. So omega will be root over 1, 1 by root over Lc. So frequency will be equal to natural frequency, which is equal to 1 by 2 pi root over Lc. That, what happens to impedance at resonance? Z. Can you think? It becomes minimum. 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 How much it becomes? Root over by, uh, R square two. plus zero square. Why zero? Because here, if you remember, XL minus XC square was there, right? Yes, sir. So your impedance will become simply R. And that minimum impedance is nothing but resistance. Fourth thing. What happens to phase difference? Think. Let me mention here. Phase difference. Or first you tell me what happens to power factor. One. Hmm. Who told one? You don't know. Power factor formula is cos phi. Agree? And what was the formula for cos phi? R, R, by, by Z. R by Z. At resonance, we just learned Z is equal to R at resonance. So therefore, cos phi will be 1. Many times they have asked this question for one mark. What is the value of power factor at resonance? Romana, how much it is? Why it is 1? Because cos phi formula is R by Z. And what happened to Z at resonance? R. Why Z became R? Because we want to learn when current will be maximum. That is the whole idea of resonance. Resonance in first PU oscillation chapter, if you remember, in at resonance, the oscillations will have maximum amplitude. So we were trying to understand when will be current maximum. And that will happen when denominator is minimum. Now denominator has R also. R we cannot make 0. So we try to make XL minus XC 0. To make XL minus XC 0, what should be XL? XC. Understood the concept? So number 5. What happens to phase difference if they ask? At resonance. Zero, right? Because for which angle cos angle is one? Zero. And you also know at resonance XL and XC will kill each other. VN and VC. So who will survive? V not R. And V not R and I not are in same phase. So phase difference will be zero. Can you guess what will be your applied peak voltage at resonance? I not R. Uh, yeah, I not into Z, which is I not into R. In terms of voltages, can you tell? Yeah, the root over formula was there, no? It will be not R. Correct, no? Because VL and VC, V not L, V not C will cancel. Yes, sir. So these are the things which happens at resonance. Uh, one more small thing is average power will be maximum. Why average power will be maximum? Because average power, if you see the formula, IRMS, VRMS, cos phi. And cos maximum value is 1. Though. So when cos phi is 1, average power will be maximum. And when will be cos phi 1? At resonance. By the way, if frequency becomes equal to natural frequency, angular frequency will become equal to natural angular frequency, which is equal to 1 by root Lc. You guys have uh, radio. Have you seen the old radios? Old one where there used to be a line which you which used to move on a small screen when you turn the knob. There used to be a knob in the radio. Knob matlab knob only na. Have you seen? You have seen old one and not the nowadays. Nowadays in mobile only you have. Have you seen or not? 
Uh, some of you have seen yeah. photo. online photo, sir. Photo only. <laughs> okay, chalo. Uh, now I want to tell you the resonance curve. Resonance curve. Simple it is because now you understood the concept of resonance. So imagine this is peak current. I not and I want to plot versus angular frequency and you know this angular frequency is 2 pi f so try to just keep this in your mind now somewhere your natural angular frequency will be there yes or no and this number depends on the circuit so depending on your lcr circuit it will have some omega naught agree or not should I am? that number i am calling omega naught so now look carefully, what did we learn in the theory? When omega equals omega naught, which is same as when frequency becomes equal to 1 by 2 pi root over LC, then what happens? Current becomes what? Maximum. Maximum. I not max. That means for any other frequency, which is more or less, current will be less. So the graph will be less. So this curve is called resonance curve. Okay, mention it. So this is frequency of the source. So we are changing the frequency of the source. And whenever it touches the natural frequency, the current will become maximum. So for other values of frequency, current will be less than maximum. So you can expect a peak in the graph. This curve is called resonance curve. Imagine I have two circuits. Imagine I have two circuits with same value of L, C, but different value of R. What did I say? Two circuit, same L, same C, but R is different. I want you to draw their uh, resonance curve. Let's see how it will look. Students, if L and C are same, this product will be same. Agree? Yes, sir. So, angular natural frequency, natural frequency will be same for both. So, both will peak at the same frequency. Both will peak at the same frequency, but one is something like this and the other is something like this. Can you guess from here? If the lower one graph is for circuit with resistance R1 and upper one is graph, resonance graph for, resist, for circuit with resistance R2, which resistance is more, R2 or R1? R1. It will be R1 only because this, what is the value of I0 max? This is your I0 max, now. What was the formula for I0 max? V naught by R. Check the notes once. Actual formula for peak current was peak voltage by impedance. Then what did I tell you? When does this I naught become max I two? When Z becomes minimum. What is the minimum value of Z I two? Check your notes. R. R. Which is your resistance. So if R is more your peak current maximum value will be less. So you can see this graph has less peak value, maximum value than this one. So it is understood also if current peak value is less, if current peak value is less, resistance of their circuit should be more only. So this one should have more resistance than this one. Akshay understood? Can you guess for which one it will be like this? For which circuit to be like this? Like this? Like this. Will not touch infinity. This is for which circuit? With what resistance? For what resistance your peak maximum will go to infinity? Zero resistance. Zero resistance. 
Okay. What is this quality factor? Usually for under this topic, they will ask one, one more question. And that is, they will ask you, what does quality factor signify? Answer you right. Quality factor signifies sharpness of resonance. Sharpness of resonance. Of course, I will explain. Don't worry. So, what is quality factor? It is signifies the sharpness of resonance. Now, what is the sharpness word here? Guys, all of you try to tell me which which graph would you say is more sharp? First one or second one? Second one, second one, sir. <laughs> so, second graph we say is more sharp. This one is more blunt. Okay, now we want this kind of sharpness if you are trying to make a radio circuit. Shall I explain why? Look here. Imagine this is your radio circuit. Inside the radio circuit, there will be inductor capacitor. Now, there will be plates like this, many parallel plates like this, which you can bring them like this. You can turn the plates like this. So right now, let us imagine one plate is like this and one plate is like this. So you can see they are not sharing the same area. Yes or no? Right now, they are not sharing the same area. But when you turn the knob, you are bringing this plate like this. So you can see the amount of area which they are sharing is increasing now. Can you see students? Yes, sir. When you do that, when you change the area which they are sharing, you are changing the capacitance. So when you change area, capacitance will change. Yes, sir. The moment you change capacitance, you are changing resonant frequency. 1 by 2 by root over LC. So by turning the knob, we are changing the resonant frequency. Okay, so the resonant frequency of this circuit we are changing. Now, depending on the broadcast channel, so some news channel is coming here, Canada news channel or songs here, English, here, Telugu, correct? No, so like that is coming. Now, you don't want your circuit to detect all the signals at the same time, yes or no then all the signals you will hear at the same time. So it will not be, it will not be sensible. Now, whenever these people will send signals, they have to send signals at a certain range of frequency. They cannot use any frequency they want. So they have to buy from government. Government will tell them, okay. So let us say this is having range from, let's say F1. Let's say the main frequency here is F1. Here the main frequency is F2. Here the main frequency is F3. Okay, now concentrate. This resonant frequency is F0. Now, if F0 will match with F1, then what will happen? Only this signal will resonate, resonate with this circuit. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Matches with this frequency, this signal will be able to produce current oscillations with maximum amplitude. And therefore, the circuit will respond to this frequency, not these two frequencies. So only Kannada news will be heard. These two will not be heard. Now, if you change the frequency and you go to this frequency, then Telugu news will be heard. But for that, it is important your resonance is sharp. So what happens when your resonance is sharp? For one frequency, you will get more current. The moment you change the frequency, it will drop quickly to zero. Otherwise, if, if your resonance is not sharp like this, then see students what happens. If this is F1, if this is F2, this is F3, all of them are producing almost resonance. Yes or no? Yes, sir. All the channels will resonate with your radio. Then it is a, not a very good radio. So for good radio, only one channel should resonate. Only one signal should resonate. And for that, your, your curve should be sharp. So that the, this is F1. So when, only when F0 is equal to F1, this will be heard. This two, the moment you go here and here, you see the current becomes zero. Okay, now, 
So I hope in this idea you got why we want to study about sharpness of resonance. Clear or not clear? Yes, so understood. So now, just to make the resonance sharp, what we have to do that we need to learn. Of course, we have to change our circuit. LCR, we have to choose in an appropriate way. So let us try to do that. We will try to mathematically try to create a quantity that will signify sharpness of resonance mathematically. So let's see how people have done it. So this is Ami naught, this is omega, and your curve looks something like this. This is omega naught. And this current corresponds to I naught max. Now, what people have done, students, is they came somewhere here. They went somewhere here, here, this current. Now, this current is, if I stay here, it will be 0 0.5 times this, yes or no? Half, half matlab 0 0.5. So, they went slightly above 0 0.5, that is 0 0.7. And 0 0.7, if you calculate, is approximately 1 by root 2. So, this point corresponds to 1 by root 2 times maximum current. Now, for how many frequencies this will be? 1 by root 2 times 2 frequencies. Omega, let's say 1, omega 2. Okay? Now, this gap is called bandwidth. Which is equal to let's say delta omega or let's say this is delta omega this is delta omega then this bandwidth will be omega 2 minus omega 1 which is 2 delta omega now try to think all of you if this bandwidth is small the graph will be more sharp or less sharp more sharp more sharp. Think of one graph like this. Think of one graph like this. You can see for this graph, this will be your zero. This is almost 0 0.7. Actual value is 0 0.707. So this point is somewhere here. This is your maximum. This is your 0 0.07 times maximum. So this is bandwidth of the first graph, this is bandwidth of the second graph. So you can see smaller bandwidth corresponds to more sharpness. Again, students, why we are trying to do all this? So that mathematically, we can give a quantity that will describe sharpness of resonance. And that quantity is called quality factor. So in the formula of quality factor, where do you want bandwidth? Remember, if quality factor is more, sharpness should be more because quality factor signifies sharpness. Now, where will you put bandwidth? Numerator or denominator? Denominator. Because, where, where? Denominator. Very good. Because if bandwidth is small, your resonance will be sharp. Right? So, you will put bandwidth in the denominator. However, students, we want quality factor to be a unitless quantity, just a number, just a number. So here bandwidth is there, means frequency is there. So here also we want to put some frequency which is fixed for a circuit. And that frequency is obviously natural frequency. So this ratio, this ratio of natural frequency, omega naught, divided by bandwidth. And what is bandwidth? 2 delta omega, where delta omega is this gap, okay? So this will be 2 times. That is called quality factor. Forget about omega naught, it's a constant. But delta omega is important. So if bandwidth is less, sharpness will be more. Just make a note of this. This I wrote in terms of angular frequency. If you want, you can write in terms of frequency also. Okay. So this is your natural frequency. This is the bandwidth. So this bandwidth will be in hertz. 
this bandwidth will be in radian per second. Okay, this is in hertz, obviously, and this is in radian per second. That's how you should know whether you are dealing with frequency or omega. Omega is in radian per second, frequency is in hertz. So if there are two cycles per second, it is two hertz. Now two cycles also means two into two pi radian per second. So the, so the moment you multiply frequency with two pi, it will become radian per second. See, what we will do now is try to create a formula for quality factor in terms of the three elements of LCR circuit. What are the three elements of LCR circuit? L, C, R. I want that. Now, you know, omega naught can be written as 1 by root over LC. So, no problem. Omega naught can be written in terms of L and C. But what about bandwidth? That we want to learn. Now, let me again tell you what is bandwidth. Bandwidth is the difference between those frequencies where the current reduces to how much students? 1 by root 2 times maximum value. Now, the reason why 1 by root 2 was chosen is simple. They wanted the difference between those frequencies where the power consumed becomes half of the maximum. Now, if power is half, why current is 1 by root 2? Let us try to check quickly. I hope all of you will agree if I say power is proportional to square of current I square R. So, if current is made 1 by root 2, like I did here, what will be power? 1 by root 2 square will be how much? 1 by 2. Understood? So, these frequencies are called Mention somewhere, this omega 1 comma omega 2 are called half power frequencies. Half power frequencies. Matlab, they are the frequencies at which the power consumed becomes half. Half of what? Maximum value. So, if somebody says what is bandwidth, just mention it is difference between half power frequencies you can add in short or you can say it is difference between those two frequencies at which power consumed is half of maximum value. That's it. Okay. In short, you can see it is difference between half power frequencies or it is difference between those two frequencies where the current becomes 1 by root 2 times the maximum current or you can say the power becomes half times the maximum. So, until there, we call that gap, we call bandwidth. And the smaller is the bandwidth, the more sharp will be your resonance. Okay. Now, we just derive a formula. Okay. So, the Derivation for quality factor. So, we'll plot a graph here. Simple graph. The more you draw the graph, the more you'll get the clarity. So, this graph is for I0 versus omega. This is I0 max. And somewhere here, I have chosen 1 by root 2 times I0 max. And that happens for how many frequencies? Two frequencies. This is omega naught. This is omega one or omega two, I don't. Check your notes. Omega one. Omega one. And here omega two. This gap, I wrote delta omega. You don't have to draw again. You can use the same diagram. Now, at omega equal to, when omega is equal to omega one, which is equal to how much? Look carefully, omega 1. It is omega naught. This is omega. Whenever people have coordinate students, x, it means from 0 to here is x, no? This is origin. So, omega naught method from origin to this point is omega naught. From omega naught, if you subtract delta omega, you will get omega 1. 
So at omega equal to omega 1, which is this, or omega equal to omega 2, which is how much? Omega naught? Plus omega, delta omega naught. Plus, Plus delta. delta. Because this much is omega naught, you add delta omega, you will get omega 2. So what happened at these two frequencies, which are called half power frequencies, right? So at omega equal to omega 1 or omega equal to omega 2, what happened? Your peak current became 1 by root 2 times the maximum. Right? Okay. What was the formula for I naught? V naught by Z and Z was root over R square plus XL minus XC whole square. That is equal to 1 by root 2. And what was I naught max? V naught divided by minimum Z. Minimum Z was R. Just check guys, you guys remember or not, this is your V naught by Z. And maximum current means V naught by minimum impedance. Minimum impedance was R. Now your V naught gets cancelled. Then you cross multiply. Root 2 R equals root over R square plus XL minus XC whole square. How to remove the square roots? Square both sides. You will get 2 R square equal to R square plus XL minus XC whole square. Then bring this R square here. 2 R square minus R square will be R square. XL minus XC whole square. That will give you R equals to plus minus XL minus XC. Let me just write right now XL minus XC. But remember, it can be minus XL minus XC. I mean, it can be XC minus XL also. You know this, you know, students. If X squared is 5, X is plus minus 5. So, if R squared is this, R can be either XL minus XC or minus times this. Minus times this means what? Xc minus Xl. So whichever is more, we should write first. So this is where we have reached. If I assume Xl minus Xc, then I am assuming um, Xl is greater. Now guys, if Xl is greater, then I am talking about omega 2 or omega 1. See, stop writing once. All of you listen carefully. Stop writing. Here what happens? Xn equal to Xc. That is resonance. Here, omega 2 is more. Omega 2 is more than omega 1. So your Xn will be more. Why Xn will be more? Because Xn formula is L omega. Xc formula is 1 by C omega. Now tell me out of these two, if omega increases, which one is actually increasing? XL or XC, if omega increases. XL. XL. So if omega increases, this increases. If omega increases, this decreases. So whenever omega is more, XL is more. And which one has more omega here? Omega 1 or omega 2? Obviously, omega 2. So if I write XL minus XC, I'm saying omega is omega 2. Okay, now, otherwise... If I write Xc minus Xn, then it is omega equal to omega. So here, omega equals to omega 2, remember. Because there are two omega where this happens. Please remember, guys, this whole thing happens for two omega. One is omega 1 or omega 2. Now, which ones are exactly? That depends on whether you write Xn minus Xc or you write Xc minus Xn. That's the beauty. See how nicely the mathematics also says. Let's try to imagine. Mathematics also is saying that there are two possibilities depending on whether you choose this omega or this omega. So for this omega, Xn is greater. For this omega, can you guess? Xn will be less. Okay, now. So please remember, while substituting now formula for Xn and Xc, you should write omega 2, not omega 1. Look here, look here. Tomana. This is omega naught, this is omega 1, this is omega 2. Quickly tell me which one is more, omega 2 or omega 1? Omega 2. Omega 2. Now, if omega 2 is more, 
xn formula is l omega xc formula is 1 by c omega if you take more omega xl will be more if you take more omega xc will be less so here your xl will be more because you are choosing more omega than resonant at resonant the those two are equal xl and xc that is how the class started today so for omega 2 did you accept that xl should be greater than xc because xl increases xc decreases when omega is more yes or no yes sir yes sir so if xl is more then this formula i have, I have chosen here to see there are two solutions of r one is xl minus xc and one is xc minus x so since i have chosen xl minus xc i am choosing xl to be more and xl is more for omega 2 that is why this formula should be written for omega equal to omega 2 try to derive with use here omega 1 only and do it you will get negative resistance which is nonsense answer will be same but minus sign will come because you did not take care of this small part clear now yes sir okay, okay. So, where did we reach? R equals to XL minus XC and this happens for omega equal to omega 2. Try to reverse this XC minus XL and write omega equal to omega 1 and derive same answer you will get. Now, XL is L omega 2 minus 1 by C omega 2. Omega 2 in terms of omega naught was omega naught plus delta omega. Omega 2 was omega naught plus delta omega. Now let us simplify. Uh, keep it same only. Here you take omega naught common. So you will get 1 plus delta omega by omega naught. Check once, then L omega naught plus L delta omega 1 by C omega naught. Take this in the numerator 1 plus delta omega by omega naught minus 1. That will now give me R equals to L omega naught plus L delta omega minus 1 by c omega naught and here i will use binomial expansion here 1 plus x power n can be written approximately 1 plus n x if x is very less than 1 students so this is a very small number you check omega naught was somewhere here delta omega was this much only so, this much divided by this much, again, this much divided by this much will be a small number. So, we can use binomial expansion. So, can you tell me, think of this as x. So, 1 plus x power n, this n will come here. So, you get 1 minus delta omega by omega naught. So, now, let us multiply this fellow. So, this into this will be 1 by c omega naught minus minus will be plus delta omega by c omega naught square. Right? Omega naught into omega naught will be omega naught square. Now, one simplification you see. These two will cancel. Who can tell why those two cancel? Look here. Omega naught formula you tell me 1 by root over lc. So, omega naught square will be what? 1 by lc give one omega naught here bring l here so omega naught l will be 1 by omega naught c matlab xl is equal to xc at omega equal to omega naught basically so we know the formula for omega naught square it bring one omega naught here l here so you see these two will be same so those two cancel and the remaining thing is now what? R equal to L delta omega plus 
delta omega by c omega naught square. Now, look carefully. Omega naught square can be written as what? Tell me from here. 1 by LC. Yes or no, guys? Omega naught square from here. Yes, sir. Then your C will also cancel. L will go up. R equal to L delta omega plus. Friends, this L will go in numerator or not? Yes, sir. So L delta omega. So you will get R is equals to 2L delta. Oh, super. Why super? Because you saw 2N delta omega. So let us write together. Now, do you remember who is this fellow? Bandwidth. Yeah, super. super. So 2 delta omega is equal to R by L. Quality factor. Remember, our aim was to derive formula for quality factor. It was equal to resonant frequency by bandwidth. So it will be equal to omega naught by what is 2 delta omega r by n. So r by n will go up. So quality vector formula is omega naught l by r. So this is the easy one to remember. But I want you to remember with r, l and c also. Where is c? C is not visible right now. So let us write in terms of only those three elements, L, C, R. This is the one you can memorize, no problem. This is easy to memorize. So Q equals to omega naught L by R. Omega naught formula was 1 by root L, C into L by R, which is equals to L in numerator, root L in denominator. will give you root L in numerator. So root of L by C into 1 by N. Now, need students, need, of course, JE also. Even if you don't remember the derivation, no problem. But you need to know the formula for quality factor in terms of L, C, R. Which of the following combination is best, sir, is best for turning L, C, R circuit for communication? For communication of radio and all that. So for best communication, what I told you, sharpness should be more or less? More. 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 For, for, and for sharpness to be more, Q should be more. And how Q will be more? If L is more, C is less, R is less. So they are asking which circuit will give you best uh, communication. First option, R25, L1.5. C45. Units are same, so I will not write. R25, L1.5, C35. R25, L2.5, C45. R15, L3.5, C30. Now, in such cases, you may have to substitute all of them and check, but that will be time consuming. So we have to see whichever has the largest value of Q. Now, when will be Q more when L is more? Which one has largest L? 3.5. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Largest L is 3.5. Also, we want smaller C. See, this only has smallest C also. So nice. This only has smallest c and this also, this only has smallest r. So we don't need to do any calculation option d. Super or not?